Yeah. I had a little bit of uh, campsite envy. The dough burger was kind of a, I guess a depression era cost saving deal. What is it? What kind of pizza is this? Dill pickle pizza. It happened by accident, but it was kind of a royal drink. There's your tip for the day if you're working from home on the road. Welcome back friends to Untethered. What a beautiful day here in Tupelo, Mississippi. When we last left you, it was the coldest day of spring so far and was the first day of spring. Got really, really cold. They actually had a couple busted water lines over here today. Want to take that chance to remind you guys, leave a little bit of water in your tank because we found out unexpectedly today the water was shut off and luckily we had about a half a tank of water on us. So it's always a good idea to leave a little bit of water in the tank. Ange was nice enough today to take off and go get that transmission service done on the truck we were talking about. Metro Ford in Tupelo, Mississippi did an awesome job. They were reasonably quick and they saved us over $300. We're pushing 80,000 miles, so we knew it was time for another transmission service. And I also wanted to get the front and rear differential serviced along with the transfer case. But their labor rate's $200 an hour. So your transmission service is gonna be like $750. We actually got out cheaper than the last transmission service we had done nearly a year ago in North Carolina, I think $406. So I'm never happy to spend money, but I'm sure happy to save money. Yes. We are going to do something tonight that I'm really excited about because it's something I've never heard of. We heard about a thing called mead, and maybe I'm the last person to know about it. No, I was the last person to know about <laughs> it. <laughs> but in case you don't know, this is a type of alcohol that predates beer and wine. It's basically fermented honey and water. It happened by accident, but it was kind of a royal drink when they figured it out. I love honey, I love wine, I'm intrigued. I will try just about anything at least once and I like the history. The funny thing is, the word honeymoon actually comes off of this word. And it was something that they would drink on their honeymoon trying to conceive. Yeah. I so where's the word beer come from? <laughs> Cause that's what I like. <laughs> We like to learn. We're gonna get dressed, enjoy another beautiful sunset, and see you in the morning. Tupelo has a population around 38,000-ish. So it's kind of the big city for this area, but it still has a very small town feel. I know I mentioned that a lot, but for me, it impacts the experience a little bit. If it's stressful to navigate the area, then it takes away from it. We haven't done a lot of exploring, but I would personally say that you could tackle Tupelo probably in a day, hit the downtown shops, catch some of the Elvis Presley things, the guitars, the murals, the statues. You can check out the hardware store, go in and speak with them, maybe visit the home place, which I believe is a really quick get. Here at Johnny's Drive-In, this was Elvis's favorite place. He has a booth here, so you could go in and get you a burger and check it out. They have a national battlefield that honors the Battle of Tupelo. It's very small, but they have kind of a little variety there, a little history. And then you have Natchez Trace Parkway, which is a beautiful drive that you can take. Here on Natchez Trace Parkway, they have an area called Old Town Creek. In the Chickasaw villages, Americans wouldn't really take the time to learn each of the different names. So they just called this area Old Town. Mm -hmm. 
and of course, Trace State Park. So I think you can get a really good feel of Tupelo in one to two days, get a nice variety of history and food and musical history. I say it's a nice place to try. We've talked a lot about our water softener here lately, and I mentioned that in the book, it said that you would need to regenerate the unit every three or four months. I had quite a few people reach out to me and say, eh, that's probably not gonna work. I think it's more based on the water you're getting and we move around so much, who knows? But I did talk to a friend of mine that said he has one and you'll usually feel it in the water. The water kind of starts to feel hard, not quite as, uh, as soft as you're used to. And I've started to notice that over the last couple of days. And it's been a little over two months since we installed this water softener. So we're gonna go ahead and regenerate it today. It's pretty easy. They gave us really good instructions. We're just gonna take this top off of it. Yeah. So the book says to pour two 26 ounce jars of table salt in there, which we're gonna do now. We're just gonna put this right back on the way it came off. You can kind of see some of the silica beads that work to soften the water right here. And those beads get trapped inside the water softener by these little slits here, so they can't get into your water. And even if they did, we're told they're non-toxic. So we're just gonna reinstall the head real quick. And once we get done with this, we're gonna flush the unit for 30 minutes by turning on the water slowly. Once we get through 30 minutes, we're gonna increase the water flow for another 10, at which point the salt should be fully dissolved. And it's like a brand new water softener again. All right, so we have our initial 30 minute low flow flush out of the way. So we're gonna finish up with a quick 10 minute full speed flush. We're ready to hook this thing up and get back to soft water. Make sure to get some of these garden hose quick connects on Amazon, I'll put a link in the description. These things are a game changer, especially with our water softener. We've got a main hose that goes to the water softener. We've got an inline filter. We've got another little short leader hose that goes to the camper. So that's a lot of screwing and unscrewing water hose connections when you can make it just as easy as pushing a quick connect together. Save you a lot of time. They seem to last about a year before they start leaking, but you can get a whole box of them for basically nothing. So again, I'd highly recommend it. All right, so the water softener has been regenerated. We're ready to have good, clean, soft water again. Just keep in mind, if you get one of these units, it's gonna say three to four months on it. I'm really starting to think that was for part-timers. This one's been about two months and we could tell by the feel the last few days that it's ready to go and it's not something you can overdo. And we all know salt is one of the few things that's still pretty cheap. So even if you had to do it once a month, it's a pretty effective tactic. I'm gonna pop these hoses off real quick, hook everything back up, and we're gonna get on to the next thing. So we did the regen on the water softener yesterday and we didn't notice that immediate difference like we did when we first hooked it up. So I phoned a friend who's used one for a few years and he recommended back flushing the unit first. Now our book says to back flush the unit once a year. Again, kind of like regenerating the water softener. I'm not sure if that's a full-time expectation or a part-time expectation or what have you, but he recommended to back flush it first. The tip that he gave me that you won't find in the book is before you start your back flush and regen, Pick the thing up, shake it around, turn it upside down so you can hear those resin beads moving around and sloshing in there. That way if they settle to the bottom, you get a really good back flush and you get your salt water to wash all through the media and get everything nice and regenerated. We did that, took all of about 10 minutes and man, it's as good as new now. So if you regen your water softener with just the salt water treatment and it doesn't do what you want it to do, consider doing a back flush and shaking that thing up really, really well before you do it. I think you'll be happy with the results. We've mentioned how wonderful our site is. Right here next to the water, we really don't see our neighbors a whole lot. It's really fantastic. But this park does have a little bit of a gym site and it's the one next to us. We tried to get it and couldn't because it was taken, which I think is pretty common. But I gotta show you, I have a little bit of uh, campsite envy. 
I did a very scientific measurement of this site, the length, and I did, I counted about 127 feet long. If the campground allowed it, you could park like three RVs in there. So one person gets the hookups, everyone else boondocks in front of me. <laughs> it would work. But not only do you have a long site, and you're all the way back here, so you're nowhere close to your neighbors, you also get your own little peninsula. This is pretty sweet. And it was no more to get this one. But anyways, I just had to show you. I had a little bit of uh, campsite envy. Oh, hey guys. I've had quite a few people reach out and ask me kind of what my work from home setup is. And as crazy as it sounds, we have a whole desk area right over there. And I do 99% of my work right here at the table or sitting outside on a nice day. Why do I do that? Because I get the nice big window and the seat's a little more comfortable. But I wanted to share a couple of things that I use for my work from home setup. Obviously I have a laptop, just a cheap Lenovo laptop that I've had forever that I use just for my work. I also have this little iPad stand from Elite Hood. I'll put a link in the description. It does lots of different things with my iPad. It's great for video calls and stuff like that. And I use my iPad as a notepad. I know that's a really good use of an iPad, but that's what I use it for. And if you're like me and you're going to work from home, you never know when you're going to get that pop-up Zoom call that starts in 10 minutes or the one you forgot about. So it's always good to keep an emergency polo shirt right over there on those chairs. So in the event I get a last minute reminder I forget, I can just pull this on over me. I think I've worn this in my last <laughs> five Zoom meetings, but I don't do a lot of those luckily. So. There's your tip for the day if you're working from home on the road. It's not often that a state campground will have laundry. I'm pretty impressed. And someone stuck me with a Canadian quarter in one of my quarter rolls, so that was fun. It only took me 13 tries to figure it out. And if you're wondering, the machines won't be tricked by it. started to track my laundry spend this year. So by the end of the year, I'll have something to give you guys. But right now, I'm probably averaging 18 to $20 a week. It's not really a big deal to go to the laundromats, but there are hurdles that go along with it. So there's a lot of things to factor in when it comes to cost. We won't forget the trash this time because I want to put it between my feet. We're on our way to meet up with some viewers tonight at a restaurant and we are three minutes away and I don't know how you just just realize you have two bags of trash between your feet. Why don't you pull over and let me go toss it in the back so that I'm not kicking trash out on the ground. And we're leaving in two days and I'm going to flip the bed cover back to hook the trailer up and there's going to be bags of trash there I have to deal with. That's a problem for two days. I don't want to look trashy. <laughs> Wait, that's the wrong show. So I came by Johnny's drive-in the other day, but today we actually went by and had a burger and they have a lot of different things they have barbecue and sandwiches but a dough burger is something that's something that you can just find around here well this was a recommendation by our friends and they were explaining to us that the dough burger was kind of a i guess a depression era cost saving deal essentially what they do is they take your hamburger meat seasonings whatever you want but they add flour to it to make the meat stretch out a little farther and then they cook it on a flat top grill, kind of like a smash burger style. Really good, and the price wasn't bad. I think all four of us ate for like $28, so that's that's aces in my book. And then inside, of course, they have all the pictures and Elvis's booth, and so you can do that. You can sit outside. You can just do the drive-in, because it is a drive-in. The only tip we can say 
it's cash only. Don't be jerks like us and have to have them spot you for a little bit. Make sure you bring cash. But otherwise, I think that's a worthwhile experience while you're here in the Tupelo area. This is our last day in the area. We're gonna hang out with our friends one last time. We have something that's also unique tonight that we're intrigued to try. Welcome to the F450 Platinum. <laughs> Ew. I like to hear that diesel rattle. Wait a minute, I need some massaging seats. I, I need to see what's going on here. Boy, I do like the sound of it though, don't you? It's mean. I'm gonna roll the window down so you can hear it. As you all would expect, no F450 would be complete without a train horn. <laughs> this one's a little louder though. <laughs> So our friends were gracious enough to let us entrust <laughs> us to this drive not, us around the corner. This is not ours. They're RVers also, and they had an F-450, and I've been kind of toying with that idea. And he said, well, you got to go drive it. You got to go park it and just hand to me the keys. And this is an awesome, awesome truck. Absolutely beautiful. This would be difficult to do in my truck. Let's see what she'll do here. Oh, wow. Oh, you could get in trouble and cut too short. That is awesome. I mean, it just cuts on a dime. It's almost like driving a go-kart. Look at that. Wow. I'd just drive in circles all the time if this was my truck. <laughs> I'd be like, yeah. You just never go anywhere. You, you couldn't, I couldn't make that in my F-150 without backing up. Look at, let's do this again. We're gonna get kicked out of this parking lot. Who's that crazy dude driving circles? Oh my goodness. The turning radius alone is a major pro in the F450 column. I gotta tell you, this is great. And I love the sunroof. This this is this is awesome. You can go back to the dealer, look at a few. <laughs> no. No. All right, can you sit? Can you shake? Can you come see me? Come on. That's right. Can you tell Mr. Cody and Miss Angel you have so much fun having them here? Hugh? He says, I've loved my new friends. He said, loves them. We said we were going to try a new food, and it is pickle what is it what kind of pizza is this dill pickle pizza what's all on this okay so we made a homemade crust made it around noon today and let it rise it's about eight o'clock now we made a creamy garlic sauce that is the base then i have cooked kaneka sausage uh sliced pre-cooked that which we learned what that was right it's a sausage made in Alabama. It's really yeah. good if you guys haven't had it. Um, it also has cheddar cheese curds, dill pickle cheese curds, mozzarella balls, pickles, and then we're going to top it with a garlic dill drizzle. And this has got sour cream, mayonnaise, dill pickle juice, um, and dill. So that'll get drizzled over the top before we slice it and serve it. Perfect. We're going in. <laughs> There's another pizza still on the smoker yet. But we couldn't wait, so we had to try a piece and see what this is all about. It smells delicious. I wish you, I wish we could record smells for you guys. That's right. We didn't really mention that. What, what kind of smoker was that? Uh, mm -hmm. Chris did this on a Komodo Joe ceramic smoker. And so far, everything we've had off of that, which has been a couple meals this week, has been awesome. We've ate like kings here. This better be good. All right. What's the verdict? That's incredible. That's incredible. Mm-hmm. Mm-hmm. This mock is picking it all up. If you hear us chewing, we apologize. Okay. Any Maybe. doubters? That's incredible. So this is Chris and Jessica. You guys may remember them from the Grand Design Rally. We had an absolute blast, and they've opened their home to us all week. They've shown us around the town. They've just spent a lot of their personal time with us. We really appreciate it. Sir. Thank you guys so much. We are gonna close this video, spend time with our great host, and we'll catch you guys on the road headed to Tennessee. Bye guys.
Ange was nice enough. To, eh, this would be a great place for a time lapse. <laughs> Not gonna do it like that. That's gonna take forever. Finding out that it takes longer to dump a whole thing of table salt than I thought. I like Ange's idea better. Oh. You guys just witnessed me almost flood my basement. Speaking of quick connects, <laughs> I had this little leader hose that comes up out of the floor here. I disconnected all this because it got cold last night and was gonna freeze. Forgot to hook it back up before I turned the water on. Oh, hey guys. Yeah, that just sounded bad. And then inside, of course, they have all the pictures and Elvis's booth. And you forgot to tell them Elvis Presley has a booth in there. I just said it. You did. <laughs> I didn't hear you. I think I was thinking about what I was going to say next. Yeah, Cody was over there in somewhere else. Professional, though. Oh! oh. <laughs> yes! Yes. You going first? <gasps> Did you cut your hand? <laughs> Tell me you didn't cut your hand slicing pizza. I may have cut my hand. Maybe we need to clean one of these. There is a doctor in the house. That's right. <laughs> 